Good gents. Good evening. I don't like it, Chrissy. What You're, gents? I've on, no, I've only just noticed you've moved spec. I know. You've moved spec again. For the for the audio listeners, Chris normally has a bookshelf full of anything you Trin- could ever trinkets. dream of. I think the trinkets is the trinkets. name for it. Oh, there's all kinds on there. Amalgamated from, from many years of travelling the world. Are you in the East Wing? Amalgamated. Yes. So I'm, yeah, I'm in a separate wing today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are you in bed? Are you on the edge of your bed? No, I'm on my couch. It's a, it's a recliner. Jeeves is, Jeeves is cleaning the kitchen, so I've had to move into the, uh, into the smoking room. Fucking <laughs> Jeeves. <laughs> Are we gone? Yes, yeah, very, very well, well mate. Yeah, very well indeed. Looking forward. Things look to be starting to get back to normal, don't they? Yeah, people slowly but surely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the pubs opening to have a little bit of a rest off the hill. <laughs> <laughs> it should be fantastic. Imagine him trying to work the app to order your drinks. What the fucking hell do I do with you? <laughs> Seventeen <laughs> pints of Fosters. <laughs> well, the naturals. Yeah, I just whoever sat next to me, I just to get out of here. Yeah, the five of them, mate. Get, get, a pint of, get a pint of Foster's shipped out, please. <laughs> Shout this one up. If we get in, if we get in ten, ten bags of scampi fries delivered to his table and one pint. I just think that, that's a normal scampi fry order, that, though. You know what I mean? They're only small bags, aren't they? Underrated they are. crisp, by the way. Very underrated Very. crisp. Mm. Better than yeah, a, we, um, a pork scratching? Yeah, big, oh, it just depends on the pork scratching. A bacon frazzle? I, do, I like yeah. the bacon frazzle, but... I like I, a mix. I, I like the pork crunch, you know, the puffed up ones. I quite like them. You know when you get to the, the... When the bag's finished and there's just all the shit in the bottom, your finger... Didn't you get a freebie? Thing. Didn't you get a freebie of, of some of them? Yeah, yeah. when I did a after dinner at Bradford Park Avenue, I met Mr. You got, Paul, you got Mr. paid in scratchings? I must have, yeah, cost him a fortune. <laughs> Uh, 200 quid Mr. and as many scratchings as you can eat. I mean, I met, I met Mr. Scratching, uh, 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 the, one of the big pot scratching bosses, owners. And oh, he gave me two bags. He gave me two fucking bags. I'm expecting at least a box. You know what I mean? So, a yeah, box. I, I've got something for you, Nick, but I'm thinking, oh, I have a box of scratchings here. Two bags a game. I'd, I'd finish one room a bit tired than I had a car park. <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst things you can do when you go at the bar, if say if you're out with the lads and you come back with a couple of packs of crisps, is split it down the middle and put it in front of you. Because oh, within, you know. sec- within 15 seconds, they're gone. You've got to give, you've got to give that one out here, yeah, right? This bag's mine, and them two bags for the table. You share it. So, so don't even look at mine. <laughs> if, you, if you look, if you look, if you look at my, if you look at my pack of crisps, there's a good chance that the dregs out of my last pint are going over your head. So it's up to you. Don't see the <laughs> nutty cr- table. The knotted crisp bag, you don't see that much anymore. You know, when you've finished, always I'm I'm a I'm a I'm folder a, and knotter. Sort of, no, I'm a open me like a as though you're having a like you know, if you're having a Tommy, right? And then Jesus the John. Bag in. <laughs> well, do it. Some good third, John. Yeah, like a well, bit of cam. As if you're having a Tommy. Uh, and then push it in and then fold it in. I'll, I'll go for oh, that technique. The old ball it. technique, yeah. And then launch like it. A little, little bit, yeah, probably you usually launch it one of the lads. You know, like one of the little things we used to play, pick a colour, pick a colour, pick a, pick a colour, pick yeah. a flower, pick a flower, pick a flower. I, I can't remember what it was called. What, you make that out of it? No, it's, it's a bit like that. Now, it, John, you, it's bag of Chris, not origami. <laughs> you know man, yeah, Chris, man, man, of, man of many talents, you know. <laughs> <laughs> random, random talents. <laughs> <laughs> Random talk. I can Maft- make a bag of. I can Maft- make. Terrible. I can make. I can make a packet of beef monster munch into a beautiful little rose. <laughs> little, your baft towel, are all your baft towels swans? Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of uh, Friday night's live escapades? Yeah, we did okay. our live our live show on YouTube on Friday, didn't we? Manchester United versus. Were it any good? Were it any what good? Or? <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember much about it to be honest. I'm not surprised. The worst, thing, we can't, the worst we can't thing about a, it, Johnny. We can't have a podcast in the day when we're doing. Uh, we can't have a po- we is that a collective we we can't have a podcast. It's because speak yeah, for it's, yourself. It's, 
it's like the bag of Pringles, isn't it? Once you pop, you just can't stop, can you? We had we had well, a podcast mid afternoon. Would you say we're at mid afternoon? Four, five, well, early. early, one o'clock, were not it? Early afternoon, one o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Followed by the live for United v Tottenham, and John was chugging in true style. Larrup, I, I probably oh, Larrup. But the best thing about ever, it, Johnny, ever the professional was, um, got to the end. You did, but you can't. <laughs> so yeah. every, in body. Every, it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was we will have yeah. a few more. What do you think to this? But what do you think to football in general? Now it's been back either many days. I think it's it's not the same without crowds, is it? No, no. It, it, I haven't it's seen very, anybody. I haven't seen anybody. Minute. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody going a firm tackle. And I was a good tackler. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody match match my yeah. desire. Yeah. <laughs> but, how, do you, how would you? How would you be though? I'd struggle in. I'd struggle in this with no crowds, mate. Yeah. I'd, well, I'd, 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 I'd have been a bag of shit, but it's less pressure, isn't it? You're not getting booed. I still got. If it was on telly, I'd still get booed, even though there's no fans there. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, do you know the, the, the crowd noise they're playing on Sky <laughs> every time I touch the ball? Track Brown. <laughs> Track Brown. Every so time you touch big... four, four. Just got a big boo button. Boo. <laughs> They must that should, have that should be a new feature. They must have Ferric or somebody on it though, because the the crowd noises are reactional to what's going on, aren't they, on, on the yeah. TV? So they must have someone mixing yeah. when there's a shot. Ooh! <laughs> Maybe you just said it. It'll be like that. It'll be L two, L three, yeah. L two cheer, L three groan, L four <laughs> abuse, L five the brown boo. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I think it will get better. The more games that, that that play, I think it will tempo will will get better. To be honest, yeah. Jimmy Walker today, Sir Jimmy Walker, Sir Jimmy Walker. For me, yeah, yeah that's one of my favourites. That yeah, it's up there for me as well. I I, I know it's I know it's we, we can't help it, but I feel. If we'd have done it live, I think it'd have been outrageous. I think it'd have been yeah. right up there in top, top echelons, top five. I do. Yeah, I really yeah. do because he's a funny guy. I mean, it, I think we could have probably done a, a, a three, four part with him. Yeah, really none really of us do. knew him. None of us knew him yeah. either. He's straight yeah. in when he's two feet. Um, I think he, I think he's heard a bit. I think he's heard a bit of a manny. Uh, no, I think, like you said, the zooms. It, it you don't quite get the. Don't give it justice, does it? With the zooms, yeah. you lose a bit of the, the the laughter and whatnot. And yeah, know, because it's weird because sometimes I'm I'm in hysterics laughing. I'm thinking I'm the only one laughing at you. But yeah. Obviously, <laughs> the, the sound cuts out, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, oh, in a boozer, that is that is top three it's for me. Up there, yeah. well, hopefully, hopefully, we'll be back in back in the old boozer soon, or the hotel rooms, or wherever we yeah. we end up. Yeah, we shouldn't be long, should we? Hey, we got we're back with a quiz on Friday. Excellent. Get in there. Quiz on Friday, monthly with the quizzes. So this is the last Friday of every month, and this is the last Friday of the month on Friday. Excellent. So I'll let you quiz. know now. I am not doing one question. I, I did. It's the best bit. You shit questions. I did. Uh, I did eighty questions in two weeks for ours dinner. I'm questioned that. Totally, <laughs> totally questioned that. Good entertainment, though. Yeah. See, yeah. I, I don't actually mind doing the questions, but I prefer to do the quiz. And you can't do the quiz, obviously, if you do the questions. No, if you know the answers. So, at past seven, Friday, YouTube. Till yeah. till late. <laughs> till late. <laughs> we'll see. What, we'll see. We'll see when last orders are. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Right, should we get him on? Yes, yes let's, let's get, get him in. Oh. Jimmy Walker, how are we doing? Yeah, great day, Sean. Good to be here, good to see you as all. Good to have a Thank, chat. You thanks for coming on, on, mate. More than welcome. Yeah, I've seen some, seen some good stuff. You had some good guests on, so it's been good. I love Glenn Little as well. I've got a lot to follow there because he's a funny guy. Oh, I think he's funny without even meaning to be oh, funny at times. Man. What a guy. This is just the way he looks at that in as well. I'm not being bad to him. <laughs> or no, I'm being bad to him a little. That's outrageous, that. <laughs> outrageous, but true. <laughs> <laughs> no, what a guy. Do you, you don't do your own Wikipedia page, do you? 
Because the attention to detail well, if, on her is unbelievable. If I did, I'd be 6'3 and 11 and a half stone. <laughs> <laughs> Born so on the no. 9th of July 1973 at 3 a.m., weighing 7 pounds and 13 ounces. Even I didn't know that, so Wikipedia knows more than me. Good stuff. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else on there, Chris? Worth oh, yeah, there's, there's all kinds on here. I, I believe your dad's married to Hillary. <laughs> Is that one on there? Yeah. <laughs> I better, I better change my password then. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's mad, all, it? I didn't know that. What's all legend? Cult what hero? Yeah, is it short? what would you say? Cult. Cult. cult, cult. cult yeah. Hero. Uh, yeah, well, I'll take that all day. It's been a lot worse. <laughs> but the, uh, I did a book, didn't I, while I was at Walsall? So I think they got a lot of the... A lot of the bits from there. I did one for my testimonial, just a little mess about one, but it went, it went brilliant to be fair. So I'm going to try and do the second one. I'm, I'm divorced now, so I can stick a lot in. It's a whole new ball game now, isn't it? I'm, like, I'm taking people down. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I think so. Something like that. Yeah, I know it was a 530 you know, something. Yeah. All-time leading, leading appearance maker. Yeah, that, that was nice. That was a nice... I didn't realise until about a dozen or so games before it, to be fair. And Dean Smith was the manager at the time, and I was like, coming towards the end, he's going like, dig in, because you break the record. I was like, what record? So, it was a nice, it was a nice one to achieve in the end. So the lad who was there, Colin Harrison before, was, a, was unbelievable. It was also like a legend there. So, to broke his was, was amazing. To be fair, 500 and odd appearances for a career is not bad. Never mind for one team. You know I what I mean? That my career. Well, I was, I was there for, geez, 10 years in the first, 10 years first off, and I had my testimonial there. Uh, and then I went back to finish up last off, which I'm sure we'll touch on in a bit. Um, and I'd spent another three and a half years there, which was great. So, I mean, it, it, yeah, I mean, I played. I was fortunate, like, when I was fit, I was... I was mostly picked. It was the odd time I wasn't, but mostly played. Apart from one season where I, was, I broke my leg um, and Trevor Wood came in, who was brilliant. Um, I played most of the game. So, yeah. So, it's good. Notts County before I didn't play any. West Ham, unfortunately, did my knee. Would love to have played a lot more there. And then I sort of knew my role after the, after the knee. It was more of a... I couldn't sustain the sort of playing week in, week out after that knee injury. So, you know, I ended up going to Spurs as well, which was a, was, was a dream at the end. We um, you get to mention on nearly every podcast, mate. But I believe Warnock was at Notts County, wasn't he? Yeah, he started there. He started there, Warnock. He was brilliant. To be fair, he was great from the first. He came in, and uh, I mean, he, he was a he was a loose cannon when he came in as well. Because you imagine there, he was quite young and, and new to it as well. But he was a he was a great manager. I don't think a lot's changed from what he does now to what he did then. You know, we played high tempo football, played in their half, and. And it worked, and we had a couple of promotions there, and it was great. He, he really liked me, Warnock, to start with, to be fair. I mean, we had a, our youth team group was a, was a good group. We had some players, probably 10 or, 10 or 11 of them went on to make decent careers. So it was a brilliant group, but we was very, what's the word, outspoken. Wrong, we was wrong uns. <laughs> we were polite. You were, were going to yeah. try and dress it up, yeah. then, weren't yeah. you? I say, not, I, I no say point. We, we were as long as, but, so I mean, the youth team management Walker was brilliant, and he had all on keeping us under control. And I think one day we we played the game in the afternoon. It was back in the days you have to do all the jobs and that. So we we had to do like the first team's boots and lay them out for the game on the Saturday. Warnock's kit, all the kits and all that was laid out. And different lads had different jobs. So I remember we played in the youth team on a Saturday morning. Got back to the digs where we all stayed on Saturday afternoon and we, we listened to uh, uh, Not Seth Ever, whatever it is, I can't remember now, but Colin Slate was on there and his guy, and, and he just happened to say, oh, Warnock's uh, change of kit. Today he's usually in his tracksuit, but today he's got trousers and shoes on. And we're like, uh, what? Uh, and as you see, Not's playing in the home, I can't remember who's playing, but Not's are playing in the home team's away kit today, so we're not sure what's going on there. And we're going, oh no, <laughs> what have we done? We're going to ask the lads who did the kit. We're going, Tell me you put everything in. Tell me you put everything in. Did you put Warnock's boots in? And it turned out we'd left Warnock's boots out so he couldn't wear his tracky, what he wore every week. And we, we left Dean Yates' number five shirt out so they, and they had no change of kit in them days. So they had to borrow the away team's change. Oh, mate. It, it, was, oh. It, it, it was not a good week. <laughs> it was not a good week. <laughs> We're we, we coming in the morning and we went, Warnock went... I bet I, I'm all right to swear on this, by the way. If you can edit yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you're oh, fine. Yeah. Yeah. But like, he's coming again. Right. 
fucking take the piss out of me. This is what you get. And we had a uh, physio at the time, Dave Wilson, rest in peace now. He's, he's, he's dead blessing. But he, uh, and he was a lunatic. He was an old SAS and he was physio. And he went, he just had, he went to Dave and he went, Dave, they're all yours. And we're like that. <laughs> and we've got in there and he went, yeah, you won't need your boots this week, lads. Get some trainers. I'll see you on the track. We're like, oh, no, this is a rent. Honestly, it was, it was one of the worst weekends, <laughs> me, uh, the worst week in my life. And we, we ended up running. I think we ran for about three days straight. And then we've got to this, we've done a run through Collick Woods in Nottingham. And it was like a, a gypsy site in there. And these dogs, these Dobermans were going mental. And I'm like, and Dave's carried on running through it. And like, we've all stopped going, ain't going through there. Not a prize. <laughs> you know, what you're waiting for? Follow me. I'm like, ah, I ain't going through that, Dave. No chance. <laughs> I swear, this dog came up within about a yard of him. And he's just looked at it and give it one on the nose. <laughs> and he's gone, I'm following me. Well, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So that was it. Oh, it was it was a it was our tweet with that. But we got through it, and do you know what? You look back at it, and it was it was proper character building for the lads. I mean, like I said, Warnock quite liked me. He used to put me in the changing rooms at half time for the home games because the old ground it used to. Be, I mean, it came about because I was a bit lippy, and he came in once in pre season or whenever it was, and he's having a go at the state of the changing rooms that we're supposed to clean and all that. And I was in charge of the away changing room at the time. And he's got look, who's in charge of this? It's a disgrace in here. Look at the toilets. It's not clean. Not... And I, I just couldn't be asked to do it. I figure I ain't fucking clean the toilets. I'm a footballer here. I'm not of that business. <laughs> so, so he's having a go, who's in charge of this room? It's a fucking disgrace. I'm like, ah. yeah, it's me, Gaffer. He's like, ah. yeah, fucking disgrace. What you got to say for yourself? I'm like, thought on my feet, to be fair. I was, I was quite happy with my car. I just come out and went, I said, well, I knew we've got a game like next couple of days. So I didn't want it to be so clean. So, that, you know, when the away team come, they're not, they're not quite as comfortable in the environment. They're not happy with everything. And they perform shit on the pitch. He's like, ah. I fucking like that. Well done. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the, lads are, the lads are looking at me going, what the fuck? You just got me asked. But it was brilliant. It was brilliant. And he used to put me in the end, quite trusted us, I think, to start with anyway. Put me in the away change room. We had the away change room there and then the kit room went round the back and there was this boiler room. It was like a sweat box. It must have been a thousand degrees. But you could see into the away change room from it and hear everything if you, if you went right up to the top of it. So you should stick me up in there and like, uh, I'd have to write down any changes or any subs or what he, was, what he was saying to him and then go back to him and then he'd give his team talk to the lads on the back of it as well. So if I ever got it wrong, oh, I was banging, I was back to Dave Wilson again running. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, did that, he did that at Sheffield United right? as well, didn't he? Yeah, I think I heard that. He did that at a few clubs, I think. Didn't Stan did Turner catch him one day or something? Yeah. Or catch some of it? Uh, no one caught me, fortunately. I think there was a few murmurings. I just fucking hid under some clothes and that. But... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but I had a sweat on, I know that. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun with them there. Just say, uh, they're bringing the left back off. They're going 3 5 2, Gaffer. Oh, no. I, I know, I know, I couldn't, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it was just Warnock, being honest, I probably would have done it. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, but big Dave Wilson there running me, I thought, nah, nah I'm telling the truth here. <laughs> 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 So what he, what he what he like he was as a manager it, like obviously as we all know him now were he like that back then or were he sort of it's not, probably worse were he as confident in himself as what he's obviously now yeah absolutely he he was great it just he had the certain way about him and the people he pressed different buttons for different people and got the best out of everyone he was great it went a little bit sour for me at, at knots at the end I ended up out, I mean my youth team manager took over from from Warnock when he left. And it had gone a little bit, not south of me. I mean, I, I found a, I'll be honest, I found a black orchid at 18 <laughs> in the middle of Nottingham, which was an amazing, which was an amazing club. And we, we used to go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a, club, club. A, a nightclub. <laughs> yeah, honestly. It is. <laughs> it, 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 we're, all, we're all thinking, saying, what the fuck's a black orchid? Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought you like Billy Casper. I thought it was some kind of, <laughs> kind of bird. Anyone, hey, there was plenty of them in there. <laughs> Any... <laughs> Anyone who was in Nottingham around mid, what was that then? So probably end of the 80s, 90s would know the Black Hawk. It was, oh my God, it was sensational. But we ended up, and we had Mark Draper, Tommy Johnson there, great lads. And our youth team was quite good. A lot of the youth team lads would go home for the weekend. And me and my mate, Pat, always end up, he was a Geordie lad, so he knew Tommy Johnson from up there. And who used to stay down. So we played a youth team game. And if the first team was away, I mean, we had a little moody one as well. We'd go over to... Forest grounds because it was literally our digs was looking at the gates of the forest ground. <laughs> so we used to go over and take all the lads' players' passes, about 20 of the lads' players' passes, go, oh, come to pick up the tickets for all the lads to save you doing everyone's. All the rest of the lads have gone home. We've got 20 tickets in Forest. We're sat outside like that. 
Base value? Base value, anyone? Base value ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so, me, I'm on £29.50 a week selling these for like 20 quid a pot. I've got about 200 quid on me. If I'm like, ah, this is me living, this is. <laughs> the real kid. Uh, well, that's what he did then. Tommy Johnson, Mark Draper had come back after the game, pick us up, and take me. I'm, I'm 17, 18, and it's the best club of all time. I've, fucking, I've been down time. I've gone into Lime, he's bought a dodgy fitting boss suit. <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the VIP with a bit of stubble there, a few spots like that, giving it the big one. <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> so, sort of found that a little bit there, which didn't help me career, shall we say, at that point. But, it, I mean, it was great. I, I nearly made the first team with Warnock a couple of times. And like I said, it just petered out in the end. And for me, I needed to go in the end. And my youth team manager actually took over, like I said. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, I could dig back in here and have a go. I'd been injured at the time. And I remember doing a, I had to do a run for my injury. I used to run the four bridges in, uh, over River Trent. And I've just come back here. I remember it playing this day. It's flipping near enough 80 years ago now. But I've come back in. I've had, I'm having a pint of water. I like, just recovered from Mick Walker on sea. I'm like, all right, brilliant. I was up in the summer. So I'm thinking he's going to offer me a new contract. I've gone in with my little pad of paper. Like, I want 300 quid a week, uh, two year deal. Wrote it down, keep it with me. I'm like, oh, brilliant. Because I'd done, I'd done brilliant for him in the youth team, by the way. I helped him get the job massively. But I'd had probably six months where I was shit and I'd gone off the rails. But I'm thinking, he's going to get me back on it here. Gone back in, he went, I'm letting you go. I'm like, ah, it's like a betting slip. Fuck you, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a pint of water and I'm like, I'm not having this actually. I've got you this fucking job. Like, I'm, only, I'm only 18, baby. I'm like, too far, too, far too lippy. I'm like, can you take the piss? I've got you this job. You wouldn't have it if it weren't for me. And we've had a fucking row. And Russell Slade came in as well. He's fucking great, Slade. He's coming out, oh, fucking a little dig at him and all that. I ended up chucking the pint of water and the pint smashed up the wall and everything. Bombed out and gone into the change. And I was like, what's up? I'm going, I've got three. They're like, fucking hell, really? It was the right thing to do looking back as well. But at that time, it was a shock. I remember going to the chairman after. <laughs> and I've gone in and I'm, thinking, yeah, I'm telling this, I'm just remembering as it goes, by the way. <laughs> I've gone into the chairman to pick up the P45 or whatever it is. And then, so as I'm collecting it and all that, like I've got a free, what do I need to do and all that. Chairman's Derek Pavis, he was a big bloke. He's come round the back and he's going, all right, James. I'm like, well, I was, but I mean, I don't know how you feel about it. You're a businessman. How does it feel to just lost a million pounds? <laughs> and he's like, what are you talking about? I said, I've just got a free. He's like, and he didn't even know, to be fair, it would have done it, but, and I walked out of there and that was it. And I actually sort of give up on football a little bit there for about, two or three months over the summer. Went away to Tenerife for a little bit and, and sort of sacked it off after that. I lost a bit of love for the game. Uh, lost my way a little bit. And it was only when my me, me old man sat me down. I've been, I think I've been at Tenerife for about three or four weeks. And I was sort of <laughs> turning to... Oh, was, yeah, don't get me wrong. It don't feel bad for me because it was a brilliant time. <laughs> three or four weeks. Well, ah, honestly, I, I had one week there. I went, ah, it's fucked up. I'm going back. <laughs> so, I was about three or four weeks. Come back and it was around sort of pre-season time and... My dad sat me down to me and went, look, you don't want to be a dust or what you're going to do. This is all you can do. You're not good at anything else. Like, do you want to give it a go? You've got to make a decision because if you want to give it a go, you can't fuck about like you have done. You've got to knuckle down. If you get another chance, you've got to take it. He said, I've had, while you've been away, I've had Walsall on the phone and it was talky, I think. And I think it was a couple of non-league clubs at the time. So there weren't a lot knocking about and it was all to go on trial sort of thing. And I ended up uh, having a chat with my dad, obviously. I rang Walsall back. And I said, look, what's the crack? And they went, watch your last, watch your last season. Like what we saw. Uh, manager was Kenny Ibbett at the time. It was brilliant. And Paul Taylor, who did the recruiting. they both come down to watch a game without me knowing uh, in the reses before it. So they liked, they liked me from that. Um, and they just said, yeah, come in. Come and train with us. And see how it goes from there. It might be a contract. We need a goalie. We've got a lad there, Mark Gale, at the time, who just won proud of you. It was brilliant, to be fair. So, but we need someone to challenge him and back up. I said, all right, perfect. I'm, I'm good for that. I'm good to go. I said, when do you start back? And I'm thinking, well, I've at least got a week, 10 days to get in some sort of shape because I was, I had a derby, I was a big chin down here. I think I, I need at least a week, 10 days just to get in a sauna or something and shred it a little. And anyway, yeah, we're in tomorrow. I'm like, oh, bad times. Bad times. <laughs> I, <can remember, laughs> I remember walking in the changing room and going, and Chris Marsh, one of the lads at Walsh, is a, a funny guy. And he's come in, he's gone, I've like, done the introductions and all that. And he's gone, and I've end up stripping off to get my kit off, get the training kit on. He just looked around and he went, fuck me, you've took the pressure right off me, son. <laughs> 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 so I, ended up, oh, that's I ended up, I ended up training there. And all we did as well for the first week, 10 days was run. And I was a terrible runner anyway, terrible. 
And I think I lasted about a week and I've gone. And we got back to this airport. We used to run around the airport. It was about three miles long. I'm not, I'm not seeing a ball. And then other days when you didn't see a ball for your season, I'm thinking, Whoa. I'm going back to Tenerife here. I'm sacking this. <laughs> <laughs> and we've gone, and we've ended up, got to about, four, it must have been five days in, six days in. I got to the airport and he's gone, right, we're going for one group's running around the thing, use rest, then you go back around the other way. And you go out, I went, oh my God. So I've got to this, and I always remember, it was like a park, the airport park type thing. Not, not the airport with the planes on it, so it, was, it was called the airport, big field. Um, and I got round to the swings about 400 yards up there. And I looked down, I thought, ah, this is not for me, this. And I end up walking back down. And like Kenny, if it's there, I'll, I'll, I'll do his accent. I can't do it. It's Yorkshire lad. <laughs> he had the best accent ever. He's gone, he's gone, what are you doing? <laughs> I told you I couldn't do his accent. Yeah, it's got it's funny. <laughs> the Yorkshire like, Indian. Oh. <laughs> I won't do his accent. You're right. <laughs> so I come down, he's on what are you doing? Like, I said, I said, well, my groin's a bit sore, like, from the op from last year. Running's not helping it. He's like, ah, and I thought, I've blown it. Like, and he, he didn't look at me. He just carried on. I'm sat there, I'm thinking, I've blown it. What a dickhead. <laughs> and I ended up going to him. I said, Kenny, can I have a word? And he's gone, yeah. I said, look, I'm not great at running. I've not been great this week. I know that, but it's just running. He said, fucking not been great. You've been a fucking disgrace. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was good. I was good. <laughs> that better, wasn't it? Is that better? <laughs> so he's gone like that, and he's gone, uh, and he had a right go. I said, well, look, it's not my game. I'm not about running. I can't. I'm not a runner, but have a swing a crossing. I have a shot. I'll show you what I can do. Just stick me in the goals. Like, that's what I'm here for. I'm not fucking running. And he's gone, all right. Sting said that. I like that. I mean, that could have gone either way for some managers. He's going to fuck me right off. But he's gone, all right. I like that. He got a bit of bollocks about you. Like, all right, we're going to Ireland in a couple of days. I'm going to take you with me on that. And I felt bad because there was another lad on trial from Coventry. And he was like, 6-3 he was at the front of the running he was proper looked after him running his bollocks off and because I'd said that he took me to Ireland and been this geezer off he'd not even made a save I'm like oh, I'm brilliant. <laughs> but like luckily I went to Ireland and, and, and did okay there was a couple of runnings over there that he weren't too happy about but he ended up I played the first game or two and, and he said look like what I see you know we can offer you a contract he, he actually offered me on the what do you call it provision stipulation there was one rule to offer me the contract I had to lose a stone oh, that's, that was harsh that was harsh so I said alright I said I can't impossible I impossible for some <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. I had a lot to go to be fair but he said look I, I'm not going to say do it now but you need to lose a stone before you get in my team but I like what you see come in you can challenge Gailey and we'll go from there sort of thing and I remember sat in Ireland and the lads had a night out and I thought I'd half got away with it because I, I tagged in. I thought, oh, I should really go in, to be fair. He let us have a few drinks, a few Guinness and Ireland. It was like 12 o'clock curfew or something. So it's got to 12 and I'm like, ah, I should really go in, to be fair. The lads are all cracking on the dance. I thought, oh, yeah, it's not my game going in early. <laughs> so I started it. And I, I thought I got away with it until Marshall I mentioned earlier. We've all got back to the hotel about four in the morning, skipped round the back doors and all in. And then we thought, right, brilliant. I'm just getting... Sort of down the corridor to my room. I'm thinking, I've got away with this. Brilliant. That's all right. Marsh has got this fire extinguisher, the powder one. So he's let it all off down the corridor and all that. And we're like running everywhere. And little did we know, like, next day he's come down, he's gone, right, what times are you using? I'm going, what are you talking about? Well, 12 o'clock, after about 10 to 12. He's like, all right, yeah. He said, right, I need to see you, you, and you. <laughs> little did we know, the powder footprints, uh, the, the powder in the corridor leaves the footprints, doesn't it? So they knew the fire extinguisher went off about four in the morning and whose footprints are going through each door. There's about four different footprints going through each door. So he, know, he knows exactly whose door. You know the door. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm all the luck in the world. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a fucking CSI scene, isn't it? <laughs> it was, it was. It doesn't take Poirot it powder everywhere, or does it? It stood me in good stead for being in Essex. There was powder everywhere. But like my footprints are in fucking going out of the door. So he's like, he's obviously clocked it and gone looking food though isn't it you know he's like CSI he's like ah. fucking Columbo he's like ah. excuse me sir one last thing <laughs> footprints of that door that's fucking walkers footprints of that door that's Marsh that's it so about six of us all got across and we're thinking how the fuck does he know and it's only the hotel told us how they found out and I'm like ah. so he weren't happy at all but he let me and off still on trial at this point as well by the way is it what were you still on trial at this point I was still on trial I was on trial it was like a trial week <laughs> I know, I know. I couldn't resist it. Couldn't resist it. I <laughs> thought I got away with it. So he, he, liked, he ended up liking me and he's like, he let us off with that. And then I think we played the last game. 
over there and I'd done well again to be fair and he was like I could tell he was happy with me and we had a little bite to eat after and I could see him looking at me still though because he said about the stoning weight so there was like chicken and chips after and all that in a basket and I'm like and I could see him looking so I'm like to the waitress I'm like yeah 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 leave the chips off leave the chips leave the chips nah, just chicken for me athlete like that. so I like that and I thought oh brilliant and he's, he's clocked me and I see him going like that mm, fair dues and he, could, he chatted to the Paul Taylor his assistants and that going and I'm thinking he must be saying he's having a go fair play so I'm like ah oh, brilliant babe do us a favour stick a basket of chips under the table for me <laughs> So I'm like, and I thought, again, I thought I'm getting away with this. I'm like, I'm eating my chips. I'm eating my chicken on top and my chips underneath. No, he's only clocked me and he's gone fucking running over. The chips have gone everywhere, you fat bastard. I fucking told you to lose a stone, you eat chips. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> about a lot. Like, managers like in a bit of a wrong one. They just they take, uh, take yeah. wrong ones only. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think some like, I mean, you can overstep the mark. There's a fine balance, isn't there? But I've always loved the character. So I like I like the character. I think they bring a bit more to the pitch on you. Don't get me wrong, everyone's got a, a place and that. And you know, there's some quiet people who are fantastic players and managers love them as well. But I think like they do like the characters, don't they? Especially if they've played before, because they've been in the change rooms with the characters. You know what it was like back then as well, Jesus. I mean, it was you could get away with a lot more. Well, you could get away with ninety five percent more than you could nowadays. I mean yeah. there was no Maybe camera phones or anything then. Sorry, Ronnie. Did Kenny give you your debut? He gave me a debut, to be fair. Um, I'd done, done really well, to be fair. I dug in as well. I know I'm having a joke and that, I know, so, but I did dig in. I lost a bit of weight and got to about 12 games in. And Mark Gale was a goalie. He went to Liverpool, actually. I was, I was thinking, what? hold on, there's something not right here. So I got in the team about 12 games in, made me debut, did really well and, and stayed in after there. About a month later, Gailey went on loan to Liverpool. I'm like, ah, something not right here. I've just got in his place and he's got to Liverpool on loan. <laughs> I didn't even know how it happened. But fair play, he was a good goalie and he ended up, I think he signed, he didn't sign here, but he, he went and had a good career as well. But, and, and from that moment, I sort of stayed in the rest of the season. I broke my leg at the end of that season, about a game to go, two games to go, which unfortunately. Um, so that was me out for the summer and start of next season. Then they brought another lad in, Trevor Wood. Um, and he turned out to be brilliant. He, he started the season... But obviously, Kenny loved us and he was having, we was having a bad time in the league, although Trevor's do, doing quite well. I think managers tend to stick with people who've done well for them, don't they? Especially when they, you know what you're going to get, sort of thing. So it threw me back in, but I was nowhere near fit. Like, them days, you never had proper physios, you never had fit recoveries and all that. I'd had four or five months out, I'd had probably two weeks of training and thrown straight back in. And it was one of those, I played, I did all right. And then we went to Colchester away on a Tuesday, I still remember it. And the lad who broke my leg, had played on the Saturday. Uh, sorry, was playing for Colchester. The lad who broke my leg the season before was playing for Colchester. So I thought, I'm fucking playing in this, whatever. I don't give a fuck what, what the result is. He's fucking having it. So I remember... Was, Paul, it, was, it, was it a bad one? Was it a bad one when he brought your leg or...? It weren't a nice one. It, we, it was a... With a game to go, with nothing on the game, it was a naughty one. Do you know what I mean? It was one of He them. didn't need to do it. Like... He didn't need to do it. I'd, yeah. I'd gone down, I'd comfortably got it and he's just gone and like took us out two foot of me, really. And so it was a naughty one. So I had it in my head and I'm thinking, well. I'm not saying I'm not fit now because I want to play because I want to iron him out. And, and the ball, ball came over the top and I ended up, I didn't even look at the ball. It's bad really, but mm -hmm. I've ironed him clean out and he's ended up heading it and he scored from it. So he probably got the last lap anyway. But <laughs> it felt fucking great to give him one. <laughs> <laughs> what, were, we, what were that German keeper who did it when he... Yeah, uh, when I he, know what you mean. When he proper... Know, was it Schumacher? I think, I think it might have been. I think yeah. Schumacher on bats, wasn't it? Or some of the France lad, <laughs> yeah. I, I was, it weren't quite as good as that one, but it was a good one. I got elbows <laughs> in there and everything. <laughs> but, but unfortunately, he scored, so it turned it a bit sour, so everyone's having a go at me. But, and we lost it. We lost three. We let, I let three, and I know we lost the game, so it might be three, one, three, two. <clears throat> but I was nowhere near fit. And, I, and on the Saturday, I, uh, I sort of, I pulled him before, because I said, look, I'll be honest with you. And this is the first and last time I was ever honest about not playing. If I had the flu before a game after this, if I was injured or not fit, I would never say a word. I'd just try and get through the game best I could. Because this game was turned out to be Kenny's last. He got a sack after it. But I'd sort of said, look, I'm not playing. Um, uh, not not playing, but probably better to play Woody. Give me another couple of weeks, really. Because I'm nowhere near fit. Far too honest. And Trevor Wood played. Did really well. They won the game comfortably 4-0. I didn't I wouldn't even had a touch, to be honest, if I'd have played. 
And it turned out Chris Nicholl, who's going to be the next manager, was in the stands watching the game. So he'd already primed him as new manager. Kenny got the sack after the game. Woody had played the game, obviously. They weren't going to change anything. And, and that was it, really. So I never played the rest of that season. But Chris Nicholl coming, who was, who was fantastic. But he was... a uh, how shall we say? I mean, he's having a bad time at the minute, bless him. I know just getting off track, a few of the old Warsaw lads have got a WhatsApp group and he's struggling with a bit of dementia, onset of dementia and that at the minute. So we've all got a WhatsApp group. We've, we're going to take him like GPS watch around this week as it goes and, and look after him a little bit and try and take him out golf and that. So he's, he's been... so. But back in the day, I mean, he was a, he was a lunatic anyway, but not through dementia. He was just a madman. <laughs> and he came, he, came, he came in. Oh my God, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, the first day he came in and the chairman was all buzzing because we got away with a lot under Kenny and Chris was like, obviously had a reputation of being hard oh, man. He's come in and he's come in the changing room and he's gone. The chairman's introduced him like that and he's really smug with himself like you're for it now. And he's <laughs> fucking, he's ushered the chairman out the door, pushing him out, shut the door on him and he's just stared around for about, it felt like 20 minutes, just staring. And we're like, what the fuck have we got here? <laughs> and he's like, and he had this tightest blazer, was really the tightest blazer on ever. And he fucking stared for about five minutes and he took, tried to take his blazer off and he just couldn't get it off. You know what the lads are like in the change room? Everyone's fucking shoulders are going. I didn't even have a program to hide behind. I'm like, oh, God, don't look at him, don't look at him. Look at him. <laughs> the old school one, isn't it, when you're not allowed to laugh. You're not allowed to laugh, but it makes it worse, doesn't it? I'm like, <laughs> and, shoulders, and lads are looking at each other, going, oh, my God. And he had a thing, Chris, at the time, and he's gone. And he, he even said it, he went, I want promotion. And we've all like, well, what? Leaned in. I want promotion. I'm like, I'm fucking up. We didn't know this was his thing. He said everything three times. One, really quiet, so he lent in. The second time, really loud, so he was took aback. And then the third one, fuck knows what that one was for. Just say it again. Here we go. <laughs> so that was it. We were like, ah, oh. But to be fair to him, he was, he was ahead of his time tactically as well. He, he set out stuff on the board I've never seen it before. And we were like, ah, all right, brilliant. But I didn't have a great start of him. And Carl Lightbourne was our centre forward at the time. And I ended up, it was a 50 50 in training. And I've pulled out of it. He's our top scorer. He's our main hope. Like, so I've sort of pulled out the challenge and let him go. And he ended up carrying on the scoring. So cheers, Killy. He did me a great favour there. But <laughs> he, and like Chris Nichols going, stop, stop, stop. What the fuck was that? I'm like, oh, I said, well, what the fuck was that? I went, what do you want me to do? I'm not going to iron out the top scorer. He went, nah. And it was a big lesson learned. He went, nah. You train as you play. Would you do that in, in a game? No. Well, don't fucking do it here on my training pitch. You fucking take him out if you need to. I'm like, ah, all right, fair enough. And we, ended up, we went, we went, our relationship went downhill after that. And we played a reserve game a week after, or a couple of weeks after. And I played there. I thought I'd show him a little bit what I've got here. And I said the back pass rule had come in. I loved it. So I got a back pass. Someone's running at me. I fucking dinked it over his head. I've got it the other side. I threaded a pass in there. I'm <laughs> thinking, this is fucking brilliant. This almost looked the bollocks. <laughs> I've had a couple of them, took a couple on, fucking spray. I, mean, I must have got caught at the odd time as well. <laughs> and he, he's, he's pulled me after. And I'm thinking, here we go. He's going to be all right with me. Like, he, must, he must be happy with what he saw there. He's pulled me in the corridor. I think I've just got my pants on at the time. Like, he's gone, word now on that. So I've gone straight out in the corridor. And he's like, out he went. You will never play for me, fucking ever. <laughs> you better off going now. I'm like, what? what? Where does that come from? <laughs> I would. Mick Kearns, my goalie coach, was like about eighty-five, and Eric McManus, who used to play in goal, was about sixty. Who was there as used to coach? He said, "I would rather play Mick Kearns and Eric McManus. Fucking what have I just watched? Fucking chipping it over fucking heads, getting in of us. It's a fucking issue. You'll never play for me ever." I'm like. Ah. That's a great start, isn't it? I could have gone here. <laughs> so, I mean, I ended up playing 530 games there, like we said, but I could have been fucking done non for most of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did the, uh, the Danish fella come in? Sorensen? So we had Chris Nicol. Um, he came in after Chris. So, Chris had a great couple of years. We got a couple of promotions. <clears> in, uh, no, we got one promotion consolidated in Div 1. It, it was brilliant. And, I mean, I could go on and on and on about Chris, but uh, after that, we... Uh, Jan Sorensen came in I can remember being away on holiday with the lads at the end of the season Chris had left and <coughs> Jan Sorensen got allowed, uh, announced while I, was, while I was away on holiday and so you're reading the papers out there and all that there's no Twitter and that you had to go and buy a paper which was two days old <laughs> I'm looking at it and he's been announced and the lads are going oh fucking European player of the year he's going to want a big keeper fucking sprays it out you're, you're finished I'm like, ah. so I'm thinking maybe I have a little bit here but Jan came in and was like I said, didn't know a lot about him, but he was a European player of the year. 
and yeah. the guy the guy could talk honestly he was he was one of my best years in football for, to be fair I loved him I loved him he was a shit manager if I'm being honest <laughs> but he had a certain way he could take you so far actually and we had a we had an amazing cup run under him we, well, we had we got to fifth round of the FA Cup under him we played at Old Trafford away uh, we beat Forest earlier we beat Chef United I think in the Coca-Cola Cups so we we had a great we'd had two great cup runs we got fifth round of Coca-Cola and the FA Cup. I was doing okay in the league. It's just sort of towards the end, you need a bit, it can get you so far, can't it? And then we needed a bit more from him. He was very new to it and he didn't quite have the answer. I mean, <laughs> some of his two talks are fucking sensational, honestly. I mean, and people think I'm lying when I say these three. I always, there's three that stick out in my mind. But if you ask any of the lads there, they'll say it's more or less word for word. I mean, I'll give you the two because otherwise I'll be here all day. But the, the first, oh, I'll give you three. First one, he come in first game and he's got the tactics board in the background and he's got his pen out and he's named the team. He's gone, Walker, Walker, put the team up. He's gone. And we thought we'd had nothing pre, pre-season about tactics or anything. Nothing. We thought we're going to be spraying it around the back and everything, playing through the thirds, whatever it is called now, and finding pockets and all that bollocks. We didn't really get any of it. We just ran and played football, really. So we're like, all right. And he started first game. He's gone, right, guys, follow him at home. I'm going to do his accent because it's always better. It's no, nothing like him, by the way. But he's going, guys, <laughs> he's going, guys these guys, Fulham, looking to promote. Also, so are fucking we. What we got to do? We got to get out there. And we're like, ah, here he goes. He's got the pen. He's got the tactic board. He's going to start writing. He's tapped on the board a few times. He's gone, we got to get out there. We got to kick some fucking heads in. <laughs> <laughs> the, lads, the lads are like that. With the pro- all the programs are gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly and that is that is fucking gospel we end up going he come in and he was I mean he was a larger than life character and I painted him in a bad light in some ways with these three because somebody was brilliant and I love I love playing for him and so did the rest of the lads and we was good when he got the sack in the end but it was probably deserved <laughs> he come in and he loved he loved the booze he loved the booze he had his fucking Walsall tracksuit on everywhere down to about I don't know if you can see it but down to his midriff Big hairy chest like looking uh, Austin Powers. Oh, open. <laughs> hairy like that, open with a big medallion there, like swagging <laughs> round. He usually had a gin and tonic in his hand like that. <laughs> and he came in one game, I still remember it's Millwall at home and it was flipping freezing. You think it's going to get cold off. It's like the ground's frozen, everything. Walsall used to have these burners. No one saw eating, they had the burners. It was like, you know, Rocky One where, this, where the tramps are sat around singing and the burners. <laughs> it was, they used to have about six of them on. <laughs> so the, the bit the bit where the burner was was brilliant but the rest of it was all frozen so you'd be in that bit and you go so we thought it's going to be off here like end up the game being on so he's come down about 40 minutes to kick off guys game's on this is the team <laughs> he's got his gin and tonic in his hand because he wouldn't expect the game to be on he's gone guys this is the team game's on it's fucking cold out there you best run round <laughs> and went out of the room <laughs> Uh, that is on my life. You best run round. It's fucking cold out there. You best run round. <laughs> and that was his words of wisdom. We, I think we won the game one 0 if I remember right as well. Fuck that was out. <laughs> Chest out as well. Chest out. <laughs> Chest out. Hairs out here like that. <laughs> it was brilliant. European Player of the Year and all, you know. Huh? European, European Player of the Year. I know. It's mad. Honestly, it's mad. He, I mean, he did some brilliant things, and he was such a character. You wanted to play for him. But these were, his, these were his finest or unfinest moments. When we had the third one, when we needed him really towards the end. We'd had cup runs. We had a small squad. So he was on his arse a little bit. And we'd, we'd dropped in the league. And we were just hovering above the playoffs, uh, above the relegation zone. <clears throat> and I think we went to Bristol City away, actually. Um, no, it was Blackpool away. Blackpool are getting promoted. They're, they're, they're the top end of the table. I think it was Sam Allardyce at the time. <laughs> full house at Blackpool away and it's absolutely lashing down the game and we, there's like two or three games left to go and we're on his ass. we look like we could be dragged like go down comfortably at this point we need a result badly and we're going to Blackpool we, we played down the slope and it's the old Blackpool ground so it's down the slope I don't know if you have played there but it was a proper slope at the old ground and we've and it peeing down it was so we've got the wind and the rain with us sorry we played up the slope the first half and we have battled out we've battled his bollocks off Got to nil nil at half time. Like we've come in, no change of kit. We've got mud, claret everywhere. It's like we've played three games already. We've got up the hill, thought nil nil here. We're all right. 
come around and we think, come on, Jan, we need you. We need just a fucking bit of guidance from you. Give us a little bit. Just give us something. We're down the hill with the wind. Fucking puddles all over the pitch. There's one down at their 18-yard box now. Give us some fucking advice. Let, if we could get a draw or a win here, this is, this, we're safe for the season. He's gone. And honestly, that, we're all, all lads are thinking it. And he's coming out. He's going, guys, 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 gather round, gather round. We thought, come on, Jan. Here we go. Here we go. You're having it now. Words of wisdom. He's gone, guys, what we got to do? Get the ball, put it in the puddle and fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> lads, lost, lost 3-1. <laughs> lost 3-0, finished. <laughs> the hill, the down the hill with the wind and the rain. Lost 3-0. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> as hot as sole fucking aim was to put the ball in the puddle and all fucking British bulldog. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, put it in the puddle and fucking. <laughs> honestly, honestly, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant words. <laughs> yeah, lost, lost three. Is it? We end up, we end up staying up, but by default because other teams lost as well. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that, that, man, that's up there. That's up there in my like my top. Top five lines oh, of the, the whole podcast. That. I, I still right. use them now. If it's ever raining, I'm in a change room. <laughs> guys, it's fucking. Oh, I'll come in. I go, guys, it's fucking cold out there. You best run around. <laughs> guys, put it in the puddle and fuck them. The lads look at me like that guy. What the fuck is he on about? <laughs> I just giggled to myself. <laughs> but it was brilliant. We stayed up. And to be fair, I know I put him in a bad light there, but he was, he was brilliant. He, I loved playing for him. It was, one of my, it was one of my best years in football. That wise, if we'd have done a little bit better in the league, would and the chairman let him go in the end. The end of the season was probably harsh, although we did struggle last couple of months. It was probably harsh because we'd had great cup runs, and he probably deserved to go. But they brought in Ray Graydon then at Walsall, who was, I mean, probably the most successful manager in, in Walsall's history. They called him Sir Ray. He was, he was brilliant, and it was, it was. We ended up having such a tight knit group because it was so. There was only seventeen, eighteen in the squad. And it was so tight knit. We needed a bit of luck, obviously. But we was favourites for the drop that year, and we ended up getting promoted ahead of Man City, Preston at the time. Who was flying? Uh, we went up with Fulham. We hung on to Fulham's shirt tails and went up that year, which was was an amazing time. Was Walter Otter there? <laughs> Walter Otter, yeah, what a guy! <laughs> what, a, what a guy! I mean, he Walter came in. Walter Otter. Uh, oh, <laughs> honestly, Go Otter. He, he's one of Paul's finest. He came in out of nowhere could not speak a word of English, could not speak a word. And, but he was, a, he, I'll tell you what, he could play the boy. He could play Argentinian lads. He was a bit niggly, a bit fiery, but could play as well. And he was, he was really good, to be fair. And he, he came in and did a real good job. We end up, <laughs> because he couldn't speak a lot of English, the, uh, we, we stitched him on a Christmas do a treat, though. It was brilliant. Because we had such a good, I mean, we probably, it sounds terrible, but we probably boozed our way to the promotion that season. <laughs> Because we was out fucking twice a week and fucking three at the weekends. <laughs> it was brilliant. And we ended up, it made us tight and we had a good group. And Walter came into it and, and we taught him a few bits of English and all that. And I remember teaching him his best bit of English. You might have to edit the words on this, but so Ray, great. I mean, Ray was great. Came in and we had some runnings during it, but he was, he was a great manager. And he's come in and he's, and fair play to him. He invited Walter Otter because he had no family over. I think he might have his missus. But he invited him over for Christmas dinner and said, look, if you've got nothing on Christmas, come over and have dinner with my family. So we, and Walter's like explaining this in his broken English. We're going, that's really, it's a really nice thing. Mm, what can we do here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we've got to Walter. I said, well, you know, like, if you go, the custom is, as the turkey comes out, we have a turkey, you have a, a glass of champagne, uh, and the host, uh, sorry, the guest, We'll toast the host. So we, we, we explained this in broken English and he's sort of getting it now. He's been here three or four months, so he's got bits, but not lots. So we're going, you, you raise the glass and you say, Merry Christmas, you cunts. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what? Hey? <laughs> Merry Christmas, you cunts. <laughs> and we're like, ah, perfect. <laughs> and we're like that. We go, I just fucking fell for up line and sink. We're like, like, no one say anything. This is going to be fucking brilliant. <laughs> So we end up going on the Christmas do before the only thing that scuppered it. We had the Christmas do before Christmas Day, obviously, and about a week before. And he's gone to the fucking barmaid in the in middle of Birmingham, and we're having a fight. And he's got that. Merry Christmas, you cunts! <laughs> it's, it's, 
slapped him round his head. He's <laughs> 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 Hey, Jimmy, you said fucking this is a fucking hell, man. <laughs> so, unfortunately, didn't get to do that at the Christmas dinner. <laughs> so, we're talk talking about football change, and there's one thing that never changes, and that's the kit man's influence <laughs> on the players. Absolutely. They're always, they're always legends, aren't they? Uh, they always are, aren't they? They're always like a sounding board, aren't they? Uh, you know, I spoke about Chris Marsh earlier, if I mention him, because he's the main instigator in these stories about the kit man at Walsall, Tom Bradley. And Tom was brilliant, but he got so much stick. But Marsha now is kit man at Coventry. <laughs> and, and it's not a surprise to me. I mean, we've got Mark Robbins there, A.D. Vivash and Chris Marsh, all from this Walsall team. And great characters. And obviously, Viv was at Chelsea, knows his fault. And they've done, Robbo's done great. So to take Marsh in as well, for banter with the lads, is, is such a good shout from them. So I know we played them about four times this year in the Cups and in the game. And I ended up staying, I left the bus and made my own way back just so I could stay and have banter with him for about two or three hours after and just end up staying up. It was brilliant. But he, I mean, Tom Bradley, my first ever day in Walsall. So I've, Marsh had said, take the pressure off you and all that. And we'd had a bit of banter. So I met the lads and I went down to try and find some boots and that because I don't think I even had any. And I'm bowling down the queue and I'm walking down the corridor and I can hear this faint. <laughs> sort of like, just help, help. I'm like, what? What the fuck's that? What the fuck am I looking at here? What the fuck's shine help? Looking around there and I carried on, got my boots, came back and I could still hear it. And I'm going, and it was in this fucking boiler room. So I've opened the boiler room and there's a fucking, you know, one of the old iron skips that put the kit in and the boots in and all. Yeah, the big metal ones. <laughs> and I'm like, and it got a bit, got a bit louder and a bit louder. <laughs> I'm the, the fucking kit man's in there. I'm like, fucking, and he's come out and going, <gasps> <laughs> and looking like he was in a cooler. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell I fucking nearly died <laughs> oh, and he's come, I've let him out and he's like fucking bastard Marsh you that bastard <laughs> he, chucked out, oh, he chucked him in and locked him in put the lock on he'd been there for after training he probably would have died as well <laughs> he had he had his physio room used to look over the gym it's all changed there now but he had an old physio room here and he had one tiny window that you could just see his head in and it looked in the gym so if ever it was covered or someone was standing in the way He'd come out of his room, burst in the gym, thinking everyone's pissed about what's fucking going on here and all that. So I ended up fucking... We always used to put, like, water on top of the door or med balls or something. Marshy took it too far one day and put a 10 kg weight on it. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, mate. I don't know how the geese are still alive. He's <laughs> we, we, we ended up covering it, so we knew he'd run in. And he's fucking... But what the fuck? <laughs> and his 10 kg just split his head open there. His glasses are gone fucking all over. And he's just on the floor. Sparkle with like, ah. Oh, Marsh, I think you took it too far, mate. He's dead. <laughs> fucking too far? <laughs> they killed the man. <laughs> well, bless him. He didn't get any better. But he, he was brilliant. For we, we ended up going away on, on an end-of-season trip, Tenerife. And I remember fucking... <laughs> And he wouldn't come down from his room. And we loved Tom, but he was the butt of everything. Like, you know what I mean? He got, he got slaughtered. How old was he at this point, Jim? He was an older boy, to be fair. It was, it was, it was a disgrace, really. But he, <laughs> he was, but he loved it. And we loved it. And he used to give us loads back when he could get away with it. And we're like, oh, we'll buy this time. And he ended up, we was in Tenerife. And he wouldn't come down from his balcony. Like, Chris Nickel made him go, because he said, everyone goes or no one goes. And he won't come down from his balcony. He's drinking his brandy. We're all by the pool going, Tom, come on, Dan. We don't do anything. Come and have a drink. And he's like, with his brandy getting all brave, giving us the V's and that, going, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like that. Ah. And we're going, well, fucking just going just to knock his room down and go and get him and chuck him in the pool or something. And so we, we ended up, we left it. And he ended up, come on, come down. So he ended up coming down for a, a drink. Within 10 seconds, he was tied up and chucked in the deep end of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, you've been on a sort of a, all day <laughs> and we're like I'm watching him going the bubbles are stopped <laughs> the bubbles. And we jo Johnny Keister Johnny Keister we had who was a fucking great guy the only one that couldn't swim he was like Eric Deal he's, he's gone and he don't drink and he's just dived in <laughs> so we think we could we could drown two of you <laughs> he's got that Johnny Keister's gone down and saved him he's come up spluttering and all that and I'm thinking oh my god maybe we again well, we just went a touch too far there <laughs> That's the thing. They love it, don't they? You could do anything with them. He loved it. He they did. do what? I, I think, I think because I, don't, cause I, don't, I, I can't imagine it's a, a, a particularly well-paid job, but 
and, they, and they've got a lot of shit, but they do, they all just love it. It's just like, yeah. the, it's like they're one of the lads who, who, they're one of the lads, but they can't, they're not very good at football, but yeah. they're still in that group and one of the, they're in that group, you know what I mean? And everybody well, loves the physio. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're kit men. Well, Tom, Tom doubled up as physio and kit man. Then, so he was like Mr. Wall, so he did everything. I mean, he was the worst physio of all time. It was, it was a toss of what he was worse at, kit or physio. <laughs> That's all he used to say. You're going with like a, going with an ankle, and you'd be feeling your knee going. Yes, yes, it will hurt you. No, that's my ankle, Tom. It's my ankles. <laughs> no, it'll be, it'll be fine. Stick some ice on it. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking ankles like this. <laughs> no, it was, it was great, and it was. You like you say, your physio and your kit man. Something, something about it, isn't it? Like you always, it gets you maybe out the change room for a bit, and a few can go and have a crack in there, and it's just a different place to sit and have some banter, isn't it? And it was great, Tom. I think he loved it. And it, I've seen him since and he did love it. I mean, there's so much respect for him now. Like. The thing is, I know this was in your early days and you get, to <laughs> men- you get to mention a few times, but you've had the, the pleasure of sorting your differences with Dennis Wise, haven't you? You know what? This is a... Uh, it's, it's a it, was, it felt great. <laughs> but it was one of my biggest regrets, if I'm being honest. Not for clumping him, because that was great. But the timing that happened, it, when we was, we was, it was at Warsaw and we was in the champ at the time, we was down at the den and, De- you know, it was Dennis Wise, he, just, he, ma- he refed the whole game. The ref was horrendous. And he ended up, Wise, he just refed the whole game. And I think we was like losing 1-0. And it was the last couple of minutes and we got a free kick on the halfway line. So I've banged everyone up forward and I'm going to bang it in the box. And he's still chirping. He's about two yards away from the ball. And the ref's like not saying anything. I said, you fucking, you let him get away with this whole game. Like, come on. Fuck him off, like little prick. And they give him a bit of verbals. You got the usual, that like, is mince pies and fucking. So I, he's one of the only ones I could call a dwarf. So I was fucking, I hold him <laughs> off as well. <laughs> and he ended up getting in my face a little bit and I fucking lost my head. And I just give him one. <laughs> and I, I didn't give him a proper, it weren't like a fucking from down there one. It was more of a little, fuck off. And like, yeah, pumped him around the back of the head. But it was a nice one. You know that bit where you get Mecham ring in the ear a little bit? It was one of them. A good <laughs> ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I knew it was and, and he's like had a stagger back and he's went down he was off uh, and off putting it on but, yeah. and the ref couldn't get his red out quick enough and I'm like fuck it. and I bowled down to my head I'm steaming my head's gone I'm getting slaughtered off the Millwall fans I'm giving them the fucking V's and that and I'm, I'm still in the tunnel and it finished about a minute later so it's all fresh and it was like a Mass brawl in the changes and all that down the tunnel it was fucking great if I'm being honest <laughs> <laughs> Who's manager but, then? Oh, go on. Um, I think it was Ray Graydon. It was Ray Graydon at the time. And we ended up losing the game. But the worst thing was, I got a three-game ban on, off the back of it. And we end up, and the, the lad who was playing in reserve, like, back up at the time, uh, Andy Pettis had came in. He'd not played all year because I'd played every game. And it was hard for him to come in at that. And he didn't have a great time. In it. And he was a good goalie, to be fair, but he didn't have a great time. And we ended up losing six against Cov. Lost another, maybe uh, weren't great results. Oh dear. And, we, and we ended up going down that year by, um, it weren't quite goal difference, but I think it was like a couple of points. Do you know what I mean? And it's just, it was what if I'd have kept my heads. Yeah, you think what if? I do. And, I, and, and the fans love it. And, and do you know what? I loved it at the time. It was brilliant. <laughs> but, but when I look back, I think, fucking idiot. Like, he'd been better off not. I wish I'd have fucking pumped it in the airbox. We'd have got a 1-1 one, one, and then I fucking chinned him down a tunnel afterward. No one could see. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, instead of getting him with me forehand, I wish yeah, I'd have got him with me fucking... I wish I'd have come, <laughs> come down that, that, down. that could have come down the tunnel. But <laughs> what a great you know, reaction. I met, I, met him, I, I met him on a PFA do when, when we'd both sort of retired and he was fucking brilliant. And yeah. I was with Kudicini, who was at Spurs with me at the time and he was on the trip. And I, I, Kudas know the story and he's like, Dennis, you remember that time when uh, Jimmy Chinger? <laughs> and he was like, he was like, he said, yeah, but didn't we win the game and you got sent off your silly crap? I'm like, I did, I'm fucking gutted. And he, really great, and he was a great lad about it, but it, it did feel good, but I wish I, I'd have done it cleverer, if I'm being honest. <laughs> were, you there, were you there with Merce and that? So Merce came in the, I mean, we did great. After that, we bounced straight back up. Um, so we went down that year, had a year in champ, went back down. Went up through the playoffs, which was a sense, another sensational year, um, and and that was, I mean, that was brilliant. That was, that was so good. And we had three years then in the champ, which was unprecedented. Really, I hate that word after lockdown because that's all I've heard is unprecedented. But let's so you <laughs> use a different word. 
we've had, you know, it was, it was un, unheard of. We had three years in, in the champ and it was brilliant. And we had, a, we actually in the last season put together a really good side. When Merce came in, um, we had Jamie Lawrence who come down um, with us. He was there. Oh, Vivash, it was not Vivash. Uh, I'm just trying to think of the team there, Georgie later. We had a really good side, to be fair, really good side. Um, and we ended up, we was pushing the playoffs at Christmas. And it always, sort of up, always, bat, always batting above where Walsall should have been. Like, res- oh, massive, massively batting, above batting higher than what you should have been. Like, massively above it. But we'd actually put together a really good side. And you asked them, Finney Samways was in midfield, Simon Osborne, who was at Wolves, Neil Emblem, uh, Darren <laughs> Baisley at the back. It, it was a it was CV Corrick. There were some brilliant players. And it, we was actually underrated a little bit. And we ended up pushing the playoffs. And I, I, was up the, I was up in the summer. And Colin Lear took over at the time as manager. And he said, look, I've got three or four, three or four players I want to bring in. I think one at the time was Jerry Taggart, who was, would have been a brilliant sign at that time. Um, and he was a couple of American boys. I can't remember who they were. He said, if I can get four, if I get even three of these, but I'll get four of these, we can really push the playoffs. Like, think about this contract. I was like, I will, I will, I definitely, I'm enjoying it. Uh, sort of left it a little bit uh, and we sort of, January came and went, so the contract was still there, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave it and let's see where we're at. And <clears throat> we ended up, the chairman at the time, and it was one of those, like, and I get what he's thinking, he's done, he did a great job at Walsall, always kept him like, self-sufficient, never punched above the weight really. It was just that time he needed to invest a little bit who knows what could have happened for them? You know, you've seen Blackpool go up and things like that and went wonky after for them. But a little bit, if you've got them three players and we had a real chance and after that, he didn't get them in. Colin Lee lost a bit of his edge because he's like, what's, what's the point? I'm thinking, well, I ain't signing here because there's no ambition. I want to kick on now. I'm, I'm 29. It's time yeah. to go. I'm never, I'm never going to do it. So, <clears throat> and I was playing well in the champ for the last three years. I thought I wanted, and I had ambitions, I'll be honest. I, I thought I could do a job high up as much as I messed about. I was serious then. I was enjoying my football. I had ambitions of playing in the Prem regular. I wanted to even try and trouble the England setup at the time. You know, I was playing 29, well. 29 is a good 20, age for a keeper as well, isn't it? Great age. I, I felt like I'd just come into it. You know, 27, 28, and then 29, I'm thinking, I'm comfy in the champ. Had you had any, any whispers of any clubs interested up to that, up that well, 10 I, period? I sort of knew there'd, there'd been a few over the years. But it was a lot of hearsay and that. And, uh, you know, three years in the champ with, with Walsall was great for me. And the, I loved the fans there. They were brilliant to me. So to be involved with it at that time was brilliant. So I was not really looking. Uh, there was a few, but I just left it really. And I was quite happy there. Happy? But yeah, I was happy playing there. I knew I wanted ambition. I knew I had to go. I mean, Rob Green was playing for Norwich at the time in the champ. And I can remember Merce playing for us. And, and, Merce, and Green was in the England setup. And Merce put a great piece in the paper and never asked him to or anything. He said, look, it's, it, what I've seen, Jimmy's a better keeper than Greeny. Like, I mean, there's no reason why he can't kick on and, and get in the England squad. So, like, for Merce to say it, I'm thinking, you know what, he's fucking right. And I'd really knuckled down as well. I still enjoyed myself off it because it that's what you did. But I was focused on that and it was, it was one of them. And, and it, when West Ham came in, I mean, big, big AD Vivash told me really about West Ham it was at a PFA do. Viv had not spoke to me since the following. We got promoted through the playoffs against Reading and Viv played for Reading. Uh, he left Walsall, who we played with me for about two or three years, Big Eddie Vyavesh, and he'd gone to Reading and we beat them in the playoff final to get promoted back to the champ. Yeah. <laughs> and, we got, and we got promoted. I'm messing about in the, in the changes after having to celebrate doing a, the whole thing and reports and all that and celebrating with it. And they'd been up the bar already, the Reading lot, and there was me Darren Rack and Keatsy, that Dean Keats, who was still in the change room. So we've got change gone up to the bar after everyone. And there's a, in the millennium, there's a lift that goes up to the bar to take you to the, all your families. So we're fucking at the bottom, press the lift, and fucking steaming already. <laughs> and fucking the Reading lot have come downstairs. Sorry, come down the lift. And as the lift open, big vibs there like that. <laughs> and I, I couldn't resist it. I've gone, going up. And uh, wait, that's us. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> fucking bang, bang. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> ah, I got filled in. I got filled in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't resist it, though. Look, he was comedy. And he, he, he spoke to me for about two years after that. <laughs> yeah. And I saw him at the PFA Awards, and he's like, you couldn't. <laughs> and he's still ready. But we had, we had, a, we had a beer, and at the PFA, and he went, he went, I've heard Pards fans at West Ham. And I'd heard it already, but 
he'd, I think Pards had rang Viv and, and asked him about my character, etc. So fuck knows what he said, but he still fancied me. <laughs> perfect, perfect time and perfect response, by the way. <laughs> yeah. in, in it, the, it was, playoff final in a uh, lift coming down. You've just got promoted, and, and oh, that, cheap, that, it's cheap, it's cheap, but it's good. It's effective, it, it was, cheap but effective. It, it couldn't, couldn't, I couldn't not. I couldn't. But the only person to, to, and Viv was like, we used to call him Happy Harry as well. He was not happy at the best of times. He was a fucking great lad. Loved him to bits. Great player. But he was the best person it could have happened to as well. Because <laughs> he, he took no comedy value out of it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang, bang. I'm like, I'm fucking... <laughs> just my, I'm going to spill my champers here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Merce, Merce took over. Um, last off. I mean, Jesus Christ. How long we got? <laughs> <laughs> There's another... I mean... Merce was brilliant that season as a player to start with. We all faded towards the end, and that's when we sort of got relegated. But and we was we was tired. It was an aging squad. I mean, Merce Vinny Samways. We weren't living as right as we should. We'd all lost a bit of focus towards the end. Injuries at and we weren't off the boil, and we went down, which was probably my biggest. All, all the team. When you're saying off the boil, like off the pitch yeah. as well, going out. And... We had a few injuries. Colin Lee upset a few people. He'd lost his edge because. We didn't get the players in we wanted. We was we was try, you know when the momentum's going against you, and you try and force it, and it makes it worse at times. And we cut the injuries, and it just it weren't to be. And we, I mean, that's my biggest regret in football actually going down that season because we should have done a lot more. And I knew I was probably going to leave in the summer, whatever happens. And I was desperate to stay up with Walsall. You know, I was digging in and digging, in, and we was desperate to stay up. And we ended up going down on. I mean, it was ridiculous. We went down on goal difference. So you, you, uh, on fifty four points, give you, give you more drive. Absolutely, than... absolutely. But I'd not made my mind up, but I knew West Ham was looking. I knew Derby was looking. There was a couple of us good teams at the time, and it was in the Champ as well. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to go the Prem and not play. I'm actually going to go here and hopefully play and go up with them and hopefully cement the number one spot in there. So it was in my back of my mind, I'm going, but I want to put it to the back and keep Walsall up. And Merce took over. Colin Lee ended up having a big argument with the, with the chairman and he left with three games to go. And Merce, I mean, Merce took over as manager. I mean, the fucking story before that is brilliant. I mean, I don't think Merce would mind me saying it. He'd probably laugh at it. Because he was in a sort of... He weren't playing great. We, play, we went to Gillingham away, actually. Um, and we played... It was, you know, the Easter weekend where a lot's decided. You know what I mean? There's six points to play for over a couple of days. And we'd lost on the Saturday at home to Sheffield, I think it was. And we was going to Gillingham to play him on the Monday. And we ended up going down Monday morning. I mean, it was the worst prep ever. We went down to Gillingham from Walsall. It was about five hours, even with no traffic. We left at seven in the morning with a fucking sausage and egg McMuffin. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> For a massive game to stay in the champ. And we got down there and we got... we got And Merce got took off at half-time. He was horrendous. And we, we got pumped. I mean, it was 3-0. I had probably one of my best games. Well, one of the best games I've had. And I'm not exaggerating. It could have... They, and everyone said it after it. If it had been eight or nine, it was fucking justifiable. We got absolutely popped. And I, I was, I was nice to be fair. But, and after the game, everyone was down and we got back on the bus. We got five hours to go and we're thinking, Jesus Christ, longest trip ever. And so we said, right, we need a fucking bonding when we get back here. I think it's a one o'clock kickoff even, or I can't remember exactly. But we got back about nine-ish. And we said, right, we need to fucking get together here. Not got a game until the following Saturday. He's give us two days off to get his head right. He'd give us Tuesday, Wednesday off to get his head back together and that coming on Thursday, ready to go. So we've gone, right, let's get together. So we met in Sutton Coldfield where Merce lives. We organised it on the bus. And Merce has not been out to be fair of us all year. He's got his demons and that blessing, which is well documented. And he's a fantastic fella. I had so much time for Merce. <laughs> but he'd not had a drink all year. He fought them demons really well. And we got to that. We're on the way back and we're organising the night out. And Merce has gone, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. And we're like, all right, cool. Probably come and he, whenever he'd been in, had a diet coke or something before, and stayed for half an hour and gone home. <laughs> but this time we've gone to the bar and he's gone. I'm getting. A, I'm saying I'm getting a rounds. And anyone watching who played for me, know that's a fucking lie. But I'm at the <laughs> bar anyway, waiting for someone to get the round. Over <laughs> 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 like, oh, in. That's, that, that's, that man, to ask. that's that Mansfield. That's that Mansfield hey, thing. That absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, getting the pints and we're like, Merce, do you want to do you want anything? He's gone. Yeah, I'll have a bottle of buds. And we're like, ah, 
on the bottle board. Last time I seen you, he was on the telly crying about bottles of board. Is this a good idea? And he's like, he's got no, he says, fuck, I'm going to get me own anyway. I'm having a fucking drink. I'm a grown man. I'm like, right. The lad's got him a bottle of board and he's just fucking took it, necked it and gone. He reeled off the time. He went something like three years, six weeks, seven hours or so, <laughs> something. He knew it to the time. He fucking necked this board. And we're like, ah, and he cracked on. Anyway, we had a good night. Cracked on till about four in the morning. <laughs> we ended up, I'm getting calls at 10 in the morning from Merce again, saying, come on, let's get back out, let's get back out. And I and end up going out with him on the next day as well. Got calls the next morning, come back out. And I'm like, nah, that's enough for me. I'm on my arse. And we went back into training on the Thursday. No sign of Merce. No sign of him on the Friday either in the morning. And so we like bring him around trying to get hold of him and end up, found where he was. So we ended up telling Colin Lee and like said, look, we need to go look after him. Like it's getting back sorted. <laughs> he's, I always remember him. He's coming in the same clothes he was in. <laughs> All dishevelled. And the Friday morning, bear in mind, we went out on a Monday. And he, he's like, ah. and he just looked at me and went, and that's why I don't start. <laughs> I'm oh, like, oh, fuck you now. <laughs> Wow. I know, and that was it. He's, I'm, 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 laugh, I'm laughing there, but I'm laughing oh, at the, the comment, not the not the situation. The comment is like, that's why I don't start. Yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've had loads of people on who who have battled the alcoholism, mm. gone a couple of years, and they've had a they've had a few and thought, do you know what? I'm actually all right. I can, I can carry on doing it. Mm. But it must be a, a scary must be horrendous. thing to have one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not talking for Merce and that, but he always said it was a hot. It was. It was the e probably the easiest one to control, but the one that always sucked him in the most, I think, because like you could tell if he'd had a booze. Do you know what I mean? Anything else, he, he could have a bet or he could do whatever he did and no one would know, but this one everyone knew and it was Jerry. So he could control it, but once he started, he and it, it must be it must be it must be, it must be horrific to be no, fair. Right. I mean, touch would have I mean Touching I had that. a lot of nights, but never, you know, to be like that must be really hard. And it is an illness. It is an illness. Yeah. And on a lighter note, he took he took over about five days later as manager. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hell of a turnaround. <laughs> we, we went, and we went to Norwich on a Saturday and we ended up and he went, I'm going to play my way out of this. We're going to play his way out of this. We're not fucking about. We're going to enjoy it. We'll play our way and go from it. And he went to Norwich. He said, so we've got new, right, let's fucking play football. Enjoy it. If we lose, we lose. Got pop 5-0. <laughs> got pop 5-0. Bang in trouble. Next game, we went to Crystal Palace away. We had eight at the back. <laughs> we, had a back we had a back three, full backs, wing backs, <laughs> two in front, and George Leto up top, who was like a one man Portuguese army just running around on his own. <laughs> and, we, and, we, and, we, and we actually, I mean, do you know what? Merce knew his football. He really did know his football. And I joke about it, but he set us up really hard to beat. We went down by, like, I think it was two, three, two goals maybe on goal difference. And we had 54 points, and it was horrendous. So. It was, a, it, was a, it was a sad end. And Merce, Merce took over the year after. And he's like, look, I know you've got a few things, but if you want to stay, I'm going to take over this year. I'll, I'll just give you the whole budget. Just stay with me sort of thing. And I was like, I, I love Merce. I, I do. I mean, I still do. And I was desperate for him to do well as a manager as well, because like, he was getting into it. And he's selling it to me by the like, first job. If I do well, I'll get other jobs. And I'll take you with me. And How did he deal with the, the transition? <laughs> Sorry, the transition. Um, you know about being good mate like you good mates with him and everything yeah. and all of a sudden you're the gaffer we've heard it a few times yeah. but it was only it was only three games that season I had with him Yeah. but I could tell you if he got going as a manager he knew his football enough to sort of get going but I think and again I'm talking out of turn because I'd left by the time but some of the stories you hear like he sort of was a bit disillusioned with the players he could have got in etc no disrespect to anyone there and he found it really tough <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, there was one quote that I heard was, he's like, took the home because it was a bad training session. Everyone's having lunch upstairs. And he's gone, <laughs> I might be talking out of turn here, by the way, because this is second bad info. But and he might so he's gone there and like, he's gone into the canteen having lunch with everyone. And the food weren't great at all. So it was all right. You know, it was a budget. It was on a budget. And he'd go and he'd, there was a bowl of peas there again. He's gone, fucking peas. Fucking peas again. Fucking two things I hate in life. Fucking peas and bad footballers. And there's a fucking lot of both of them around here. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like... <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, yeah. So I think he'd sort of... 
No, and, and listen, he's fucking brilliant at what he does. I love listening to him on the punditry on Sky. I think he speaks so much sense. He's fucking, he's got a nice mix of, of banter, but really knowledgeable as well. Yeah, knowledgeable. And says how it is. I think, I think he's great. I love him and love watching him, but. It was so from, it was, watching, it, from watching that Aris Heroes, like not as long as he's doing all right as well. Yeah, he's doing well. He's doing well. I spoke to him a couple of weeks back. We did a, <clears throat> did something together a couple of weeks back and he was he looked in good form to be fair. He was yeah. in good form. He was, he was nice. Good to see. Yeah, incredible, yeah. So West Ham, I mean, it's West Ham, Walsall to West Ham. I mean, I imagine he didn't have to sell it you much, but I was uh, pardon you when in your first meeting. <clears throat> well, Pars had just Pars nearly put me off going as it goes. Yeah. <laughs> No, from, no, Walsall like, to West, from Walsall to West Ham and the manager nearly fucks it up. Uh, <laughs> honestly, he did, did just lost the playoff final against Palace. So I met him two days later and he was he was lower than a steak's belly, to be fair to him. And I've I've met him and he was like I mean, I get he was down, but he was the most fucking he was probably as uninspiring as ever uninspired as I've ever been going to meet. So I was like, ah, I don't think I'm doing this. Like he just couldn't, he couldn't really be asked to be honest. He wanted to do it, but he fucking his head had gone. He had so many things. He didn't know if he was going to get the bullet because he got the. I don't know. I don't know. He just fucking wasn't. And then he, he went back to his agent's house and he come round a little bit. And I thought, all right, all right, is enough. And he ended up saying about I could sign Ed De Hoyer's number two. Um, I've got Bywater, so it's up to you. I'm like, right. I said, well, listen, fucking let me know because I ain't coming here to fuck about as number two, like. No disrespect to Ed Hoy, he'd been a fantastic goalkeeper. He ain't going to get you in the Prem from the champ. I know the champ. Let's get it done and I'll fucking, and I'll, and I'll push by all the way and get in the team and take this up. And it got a little bit better the combo. What I did then was I went to the ground with the doctor to do like um, all the uh, scans and that and, and things just in case we agreed it. So I was ahead of the game because I was going on holiday. And I actually walked out onto the, onto Upton Park on the pitch. And part, I just, you know when you look around and you just feel, I don't know, it's cheesy as fuck, it? But I just felt like it was the right thing. It just felt at home. It felt fucking, I want to play on this. I want to play on this stage. I've seen how good the fans can be. Like, if you can get a bit of bit of glory with these and go get the fans with us, it's going to be an amazing place to be. And So that that's what made me sign. I met the chairman then and they put the contract to us and I went, you know what? I, I'm not even, it weren't even about the money then at the time. As much as it, I mean, it was a better contract than Walsall could ever offer, obviously. And I probably could have squeezed a bit more out of it. But it was one of them, I'm going away. I want it done. I, I want to be here. Yeah. I want to, I look, honestly, just looking around it and something just clicked. I'm looking, just stayed there for about half an hour and just looking and thinking, you've got Bobby Moore stands. You've got Trevor Brooks, so Trevor Brookings stands. And I'm thinking, fucking, this is a bit of me, this. I never, I mean, I played the cup game at home and then my first real taste of West Ham was in the, in the cup game. And it's Carling Cup, I might be wrong. So anyway, it was, a cup, it was a league cup and we was playing Chelsea. We got Chelsea away in the next round and, and like I, I, I thought I was playing and Paz gave me the nod on, which was, if he didn't, I would have fucking, I would have probably left there and then, to be fair, but he gave me the, the Chelsea game and, and that was, you know, that was probably cemented me with the, with the West Ham fans there. I mean, it was like, there was 9,000 there. They had a number. Mourinho was there, you know, they had... They had such a good side, Kudicini in gold, Kesman up front, Iron Robin was playing. You know, they had a proper team and they played them all to beat us. And it was, a, it was an amazing is game. Chelsea, is this Chelsea away? It's yes, Chelsea away. I mean, Chelsea away. I, I, I mean, most of you get on Twitter is like, because it's all I fucking talk about. <laughs> but I was like, nah, 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 don't like to talk about it. Don't like to talk about this moment. But anyway, there I was, fucking shed end, 9,000 West Ham behind me. Fog descending over the Thames. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles out. floating in the yeah, air. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it was, it was amazing. I, unfortunately, I had, a, I had a good game, to be fair. And um, Later on, they got their, their penalty. And I didn't know the history of, with Frank Lampard and, and West Ham as much as, like, obviously, the West Ham fans. There was a lot of hatred there. And I think it was the first time he played against West Ham since going or... And it was definitely his first penalty against them. And it was all going off. I mean, there was fights on the pitch. It was, and it was about, uh, I mean, there's a great story to it. I mean, my, my greatest moment was nearly, at West Ham was probably t nearly taken away from me. I'll tell you why in a minute. But, I mean, the penalty was given, I think Rebka had ironed someone out as perfect and usual. 
uh, Andy Durso was the ref. He'd give the peno. It's all kicking off. And I mean, not great scenes, but there was coins coming on and all that. And honestly, 8,000 West Ham behind was this incredible sight. And they was going mental. And Lampard's got the ball on the peno spot for this whole time. And it was, uh, it was like nothing I'd experienced before. The atmosphere was fucking toxic. Like, but re- and it, a kind of exciting toxic. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, yeah. and I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm thinking, he, as good a player as Frank is, and what a player, by the way. And, and a nice fella, to be fair, when I've ever met him. Um, but he, he still worked. I'm thinking, he can't be this calm. He ain't slotting this. He's just going to blast it. So I'd like to say it was a fucking world-class save in the bottom corner and I fucking extended and tipped it out. I fucking never whistle went and I ran about five yards down the pitch and just fucking threw myself at it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's hit my knees and fucking gone about 50 yards that way. And the West Ham fans went fucking mental. And bear in mind, it was held up for about four or five minutes before. And I never knew the rest of the story. The game went on and all that. And we ended up... Like, we ended up losing the game 1-0, which is fucking... I forgot the score. It was that good a game. I know. I'm fucking devastated. Anton Fern hit the bar at the end. And fortunately, everyone... I don't even like talking about the result because everyone sort of forgot about it a little bit. And that was the main moment and, <laughs> and how good a game it was. So, I never thought about it. And, and after the game, I got... Uh, Martin Tyler, actually, it was, sent me a... Sent me a video. That's how old I am again. Sent me a video of the game. He said... Uh, put a little note with it going congratulations on the game great game Jim well played you thought you might want to see your saves back if you've not already got them because this was days before all that analysis and everything so he sent it through and on the slip said that well done uh, congrats on the game sub note by the way have a look at Andy Durso after your penalty I'm like what's he talking about and he puts it like the moment was nearly or oh, the moment was nearly gone or something I was like what the fuck's Martin talking about has he been on the whiskey so I ended up, I ended up, I ended up watched the game back and watched the saves. Forgot much the Penno save, watched it a bit after. Forgot about it. I thought, oh, shit. I thought, oh, watch what he's saying. <laughs> so I've gone back to it. And on the ITV camera, it, it's a lot wider than anything you can see on a, on a normal screen. So you've got Andy Durso, and the penalty finally goes ahead after all going off. And the light, this was the days before they have all the microphones yeah. to each other and all that and could talk to each other. So the penalty's gone, and I was fucking on the six-yard line, really. <laughs> and I've saved the penalty, and the West Ham fans are going mental. And the linesman's giving it that. on the, You can only just see it in the corner of the ITV screen. The linesman's giving it that with his flag saying, like, I've, to say, retake, I've moved. And you can see Andy Durso running off in the background going, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> play on! Play on! <laughs> And he runs off going, play on. <laughs> oh, fuck you know. Uh, it was, it, Andy Durso, like, it, it was only about five foot five, wasn't he? Yeah, the yeah. The midget Andy Durso. Yeah, yeah. He was a nice fella, to be fair. Terrible ref, but nice fella. <laughs> he, he, he was doing, actually, I was watching a game just uh, randomly. I think it was at Gillingham, actually, random, watching one of the goalies or something, or we was playing him. And he was doing the assessing when he was upstairs. And I'd never spoke to him about it before. And I said, Andy, do you, you remember this? And he went, he went, Jim, honestly, I got in so much fucking trouble for that. <laughs> Just like, he said, but if I didn't, I don't think Stamford Bridge, I think Stamford Bridge is fucking knocked down by the West Ham fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I met you right, mate. He said, I said, oh, like, all I could think of me is, fuck this, I am playing on. <laughs> but he said he got in so much trouble for it. <laughs> but it was nice. You- so me, 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 and I, I, to be honest, after that, I didn't realise what it meant to the West Ham fans until after, really. And from that moment, I was, you know, I was, they, they, they took to me really well after that. And it's, it's mad how one, one little thing can, can do that, in it? For, you know, for a, a player at a club. Reputation. Just one, one little thing, whatever yeah. it is. Absolutely. That, and, that, and that was early on. So this, yeah. this is the first time any of the fans have really seen me. Do you know what I mean? It weren't loads on the telly that day, back then. It weren't mm. all the sky as much. Um, so the first time they'd seen us, so they, they touched us. I always remember someone, I was in a, in a, in a restaurant in Epping, um, I remember Black Treat, and some, some geezer came out, a big geezer, I'm thinking, oh, <coughs> I hope this is about football, and he's, and he's a West Ham fan, because <laughs> it was a big chat, and he just looked at me like that, I went, oh, mate, <coughs> I'm thinking, oh, I hope there's nothing to do with his missus or anything. <laughs> but he's ended up, and I think, he's, and he passed me a piece of paper, and I'm thinking he's asking for an autograph, so I went, I've got a pen, he went, he went, no, no, read it. I'm like that. So I started reading it, he went, and like, it was an Italian music, and he went, spaghetti carbonara, I forget the figures, 18 quid, bottle of red wine, uh, fucking 
21 quid. Garlic breads, nine quid. Saving Lampard's penalty, priceless. <laughs> and I was like, ah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was it. And that was how it went from there, from, to be honest. And I ended up playing not as much as I'd like that season, to be honest. It's a long story, that one. Again, that, a lot more in the book on this, but it stuck with Stevie. And I ended up getting a game around Christmas. I weren't quite fit, but after the Walsall thing, there was no way I was, I was saying I wasn't. And I didn't do... I had one game I got man of the match against Norwich. Next game... No, sorry, I was poor... Yeah, man of the match first game. Poor in the second game against Wolves. And did okay in the third, but we lost it. Um, and Paz took me back out of the team. And I'm like, fucking hell, Paz. I've just got going, like, come on. I needed a bit of a run, but he went back to Stevie and I thought, I'm not going to play here now. And, so I had a bit, not a head loss, but enjoyed probably the other side of Essex more than the, fo- <laughs> more than, more than the football, shall we say. And it was only like we got to, we, and we were struggling. We were struggling from after Christmas. We really struggled. We were sort of down to mid-table and we think we're blowing the playoffs and the, the crowd was starting to turn a little bit. And we had probably about 15 games left, maybe. 14, 15, 16 games left. And we was bang mid-table. And, Paz was under severe pressure, to be fair. And I remember him, we were on the bus, and the chairman and that never came on the bus. But we was wigging away, and they, there was, there was Paz, the chairman, uh, the chief exec, the secretary. <laughs> and bear in mind, none of them had been on the bus before. He might as well have the fucking Grim Reaper sat behind him in the front seat. <laughs> Wait, like, and they're thinking, if he loses this game, we're, we're banging trouble. And I never thought too much of it. Like, he's not fucking playing me anyway. I'm not bothered. So... We got into, got into the changes before the game, like an hour and an hour and ten before the game. He hadn't read the team out yet. He normally did it an hour before in them days, wasn't it? And he, just before the meeting, he pulled me in the shower room, gave me this little hook. And he went, I need you today, goalie. Well, you're fucking, what, what, now you fucking need me? You fucking, where have you been for the last three months, man? What do you mean now you need me? <laughs> and it, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, fuck me, I've had a terrible two months leading up to this. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I've been out probably six nights a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, for fuck's sake, now he decides to throw in. Like, he could have done that fucking four months ago when I was properly on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, shit. And, uh, so he had a little fucking, and he went, are you up for it? I went, fucking, of course I'm up for it. I'm fucking desperate for it. So I got my head down, got changed, went on, I'm thinking. And I'll be honest, we, and we ended up, we went one, I think we scored. No, we went one nil down. And we weren't great in the game, but I'm, I'm, I made a load of saves. I mean, I was miles off it. I can remember, you know, when you play games, you've been out for a, a while, whether for injury or whatever. You were always a one, two. I was probably three yards off it at this point. And we was, Wigan was right up there as well. There was a good side at the time. And I ended up making blocks that I had no right. I was in the wrong positions, for one. And I'm making the saves, and I was lucky because I was fucking... I'd have been another two yards over if I'd have been right on it. And it just one of those games, everything hit me. And, and we ended up... We went 1-0 down on Fortune before we'd have crumbled. And I think Teddy scored or someone scored within about a minute straight away at the other end to make it 1-1. And, and I don't know what it is, even from then, we just, you could feel a sort of surge and the fans went with it. And there was a load, I mean, massive following wherever we went. And it was just a massive, sort of like that momentum shift. You talk, one moment in a, in a game in a season shifts things and that actually shifted it. And we went, fuck, you know, we're going to win this. Come on, we didn't hold on for the 1-1. We went and... Went for it again and we ended up nicking a 2-1 and that was it. I mean, I ended up staying in for the rest of the games and we, we'd done great. Um, Did you play again? Do you think it would have been like 10 minutes at losing 1-0, the whole season would have been different? I think if we lose that game, that's it. Well, I think Pards gets the bullet. The club was in, was in not great state either at the time. I mean, you, as a player, you're probably shielded from it, aren't you? But you still know, like, it's still your livelihoods. So, I mean, yeah. the parachute payments were finishing... They had to get up this season, really. And we was banging mid-table. Everything's on its arse. So, it was... And it was really down at the time. And I don't know what happened. It just came together. And, and we went on a run after that. And it, and, it, and it was great. And the fans went with us massively. And we ended up sneaking in the playoffs on the last day. We beat Watford away, if I remember right. And we sneaked in the playoffs that day. And that was it. And the momentum was sort of with us then. And we went and beat Ipswich in the, in the semis. Like one of the... Honestly, one of the... One of the, I remember putting me, you used to have a glove bag and a towel back in the day. And you, you go, I remember putting it down at the side of the goal and just looking at the, at the fucking Bobby Moore stand guy and, wow, that, that's what I came for. The hairs on the, even talking about it now, like the hairs on the back of my neck, 
stand up. I had fucking tears in my eyes at the time. I'm thinking, right, come on. And unfortunately, fucking that, that, the, the first leg didn't go great for me because the free kick got deflected, went off the post, and always had a fat arse, and he's hit me arse and gone in. So it went down <laughs> as Walker OG, and I'm like, oh, that, don't <laughs> that, that don't look good on the old teletext. <laughs> 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 well, I, I, I think we drew 2-2, but we went to Ipswich, and I got a bit of, coming for a bit of stick before it, but fair play to my old goalie coach, Mick Kearns, who was at Walsall, and I owe him a lot from that time back there. And I was getting a little bit wound up. It was Kamara and that on Sky at time. He was giving me a loads of stick. It was a little unfounded. I was like, old goal, and second one, me and Anton had a collision, and they slotted in the rebound. Not great, but one of them things. We 2-2, two, two, we were going there, and I was getting loads of stick. And Podge stuck with me, to be fair. I didn't think he and for one second he wouldn't. But he stuck with me and Kearnsley rang me before and I'm getting a little bit wound up before the game. I'm probably too wound up. And Kearnsley rang me and he just sometimes takes a little phone call from someone you know and someone you respect. And he went, everything good. Good luck for tonight. I went, oh, no, thanks, mate. He went, listen, you know you belong at that level. You know you belong higher along them lines. Like, relax, play your fucking game. Go and win the game. Get yourself promoted. All the best. And it was exactly what I needed at exactly the right time. And it settled everything down because I was steaming. I wanted to go and prove it. And we end up, and someone hit a shot with about a minute into the game. And it's had a right wobble up. A goalie's favourite in it, one of them, oh, it moves. It moved, but it fucking did. <laughs> and I've ended up fucking gone like that, and I've got something on it. And I'm thinking, fuck me, I do not need to hear a cheer now. <laughs> we <laughs> end up going for a, for a corner, and they swung the cross in, and I think we cleared it off, took it or whatever, and, and we've gone from there. And, and we, it, was a, it was one of the best team performances I played in then, and got to the final. So that playoff final. You, you obviously injury. What was it? Last minute? It was about. I think it was the 88th minute or some 89th minute. I mean, it was. It was one of them. It was. I mean, I spoke about it before. I was injured before the game. The uh, Ipswich way. I done my groin later on, and it couldn't shift it. So I never trained for like the ten days leading up to the final. <clears throat> but no way I was missing the game. Like I wanted that stayed that long to be you know to get a chance in the prem. I've could cement myself as number one going into the next season in the Premier yeah. West Ham, which is massive for me. So it was like, <clears throat> I'm playing whatever. I'm basically, I ain't letting a goal in. I don't care. It was one of them, one of them in my head mindsets. And we ended up doing that. And it was a real good game. We were solid, to be fair. No, no frills. We were solid. Bobby Z scored a great goal. And we were solid. And we were just like, talk, between every break of play, we were just saying, see it out. One nil's a fucking great win. If someone gets a breakaway goal, brilliant. But if we don't, we'll just see it out one nil. Keep a good high line. I'll sweep everything up behind. I'll come for everything behind. It's fine. They got a free kick in the, like, probably the last throw of the dice for them. Free kick on a halfway line. Launched it in the box. And I've, I've already made my mind up. Like, I'm, whatever, if it's in the box, I'm coming. Like, and I'm taking it. And I'm sitting down on it. And I'm fucking lying down there for as long as I don't get a foul again, sort of thing. And kill the time. So as it's coming, I took it. And I probably, I mean, I was not known for coming for crosses any best of time. So I probably, with a bit of adrenaline, I was probably four yard higher than I'd ever been in my life at the box and the fucking height so as I've landed I'm coming down I've took it nicely no probs and I'm I'm right near the edge to be fair and I think if I, if I stick it and land it and just turn my body a tiny bit I'll, I'm, I'm, you do that movement 10, 15, 20 times a week in training and just this one time for whatever reason as I've landed on the sort of side keeping it in and my, my right foot's there I've just felt pain like I've never felt it's like some I'd, I'd exploded somehow my right leg had exploded like I'm you know I don't know what happened and like, imagine like in it to a flipping just treading on a landmine or something just it felt like I exploded it took me down and I've ended up carrying the ball out of the box from that line I remember thinking and after that initial pain was horrendous physio came on John Green at the time apparently with a cruise ship, if you get a real bad one apparently he, the pains to start with is is like nothing you've ever believed it's excruciating but then it goes goes off pretty quick and you think I'm alright and I'm going to Johnny Green I'm going John I'm fine I'm fine just fucking style it let me get a yellow for taking the ball out and I'll fucking go back in he's going nah nah you're done you're done I said nah I'm alright it feels fine honestly trust me he's going nah 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 trust me you're fucking done so I've gone from all this from sort of fucking out there in this unbelievable atmosphere unbelievable game being carried off on the fucking stretcher. And I'd give the, when we scored as well, I'd give the Preston fans a load of stick as well. Because I was getting loads of stick all game. So I'm in there getting fucking up that. <laughs> so, and, and about 20 minutes, well, half an hour later, I'm being stretched off by him. So you can imagine their response to that. <laughs> but I'm getting pelters, I'm going off. And I end up going off. And I end up, a longer story short, in a first aid room, 
underneath for the millennium, watching Stevie Bywater come on to deal with a free kick. I mean, there's about eight minutes of injury time to get me off the fan. I don't think the fans will ever forgive me. They wouldn't have done if we'd have fucking either let it in. But I'm watching <laughs> it on this tiny screen in the top corner. And it's the most fucking surreal moment of my life. Like, and then the, obviously the whistle went off and our lads are celebrating. I'm still watching it on the screen thinking, what the fuck just happened? And like, John Green came in the physio, like congratulated me and all that. I said, John, I need to go out there now. Like, he's going, no, 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 think long term. You can't go out there with a knee. I said, look, fuck long term at a minute. I've fucking, it's been a hell of a biggest roller coaster season of all time. I'm going out there and celebrating. Like, so he strapped me up with the biggest bandage you've ever seen. Got out, big Ludo McCloskey came. And to be fair, it was, and although it was bittersweet for me, it was more sweet than the bitter. And I got some, the iconic pictures the fans have took from it, it was me on the back of Ludo. Like, Ludo carried me around there because I was hobbling about. He went, right, get on. And I don't think his <laughs> fucking back ever recovered since, to be fair to him. But <laughs> <laughs> he's took me around and I've got a bottle of champagne and i am fucking got a bandage as big as me on my fucking leg and that. And then up celebrating that. And it was, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a real tough one to take. But at that time, I thought, fuck it, I'm just celebrating. And, and I did. And that, that night, Johnny Green, we got back to the hotel at Stansted and he said, right, Think long term a little bit, celebrate, have a few beers, but not too many. Sit with your foot up, keep the ice on all night, and fucking it'll protect it longer. I'm like, yeah, sure. About half eleven at night, he's looking around. You've got me fucking crutches, fucking in the fucking middle of the dance floor like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was too impressed. <laughs> I, saw is, uh, I saw the picture with you and McCloskey. When yeah, I was it's a early. great pick. It's a great pick. It's one of, I mean, I've not got, I haven't got, I was never mad on memorabilia like when I played. I sometimes wish I had kept a few things now and that, but pictures and that you can get now. I've still got that. Well, that was one I always had and that's a, it's a great, it's a great memory, you know, just to keep. And I, I stick that up on the wall a bit. It, like I said, it was, a, it was an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, I remember and, the, um, what, the, the night that we won the league. Mick McCarthy came in the changing room after the game and he went, I'm fucking speechless. Alan Pardew's just come in and went, you weren't the best team in the league, but I'll shake your hand anyway. <laughs> Is that what Pard says? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's him all over or what. He went, Did you pay me? it was a tough league. You, you know yourself. Tough league. You were good that year. You were really good that year. He went, you probably weren't the best team, but I'll shake your hand anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, that, they obviously fucking are, weren't you? They yeah. obviously were, weren't you? Well, 46 that, games or whatever it was. Well, that... that that I can totally believe that says everything about Pards. I love Pards. I know him a lot, but that says everything right there about him. <laughs> well, he just had to get the last word in, didn't he? Like, yeah, absolutely. 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 <laughs>